We've been talking about heredity and what kind of traits you got from your parents. Whether you know who your parents are or not, you still received some traits um, from them because you had two parents, a male and a female. And through genetics and chromosomes, cells duplicate to make copies of those chromosomes and then they make sex cells so that their chromosomes are split up and then when a female with half the amount of chromosomes gets with a male that has the other half of the chromosomes comes together, they have all of the chromosomes that they need to build offspring with some of their traits. Our learning target today is I understand that inherited traits are passed to offspring on chromosomes. Chromosomes are awesome. Our first key term today is purebred. Say it with me, purebred. Now you might have heard this word when you are looking at dogs um, or cats and you know specific breeds of specific cats and specific dogs, right? And purebreds are worth more money than animals that are not purebred. But what a purebred actually is, is an organism that always produces offspring with the same form of trait as a parent. Let me kind of simplify that for you. If you have a yellow male and a yellow female, what do you think will happen when I mix these two together, these two traits? If I mix these two traits together, what kind of a color of an offspring do I get? Guaranteed, it's yellow. There's no other color to talk about, right? Guaranteed, this offspring between this male and this female is going to be yellow. It's pure yellow to start. It's pure yellow in the male, pure yellow in the female. Mix them together, put them together, you're still going to get yellow. That's pretty pure yellow, right? Okay, so what you're going to do today is look at meiosis, which is the process by which the number of chromosomes is reduced by half so that sex cells can be formed because organisms have to be able to reproduce, to produce offspring that can produce fertile offspring so the species can continue, right? And so this is really important. So when sex cells combine, to produce offspring, each sex cell will contribute half the total number of chromosomes. Thus, the offspring gets the normal number of chromosomes, half from each parent. That's pretty cool. Well, the human body contains a certain amount of chromosomes. The sperm has half of them and the egg has the other half. I'm really looking for a number here, okay? And then I want you to watch a video and look at some information and determine why are offspring created by two parents, not a blend of both parents. So you're gonna see a really famous experiment by Mendel, and then you're gonna read some information um, that will help expand on his discoveries that leads us to what we now know about traits and chromosomes and genetics, okay? That was page 86. Let's look at page 87. When you watch the videos, you're going to hear about something called a Punnett square. Punnett square. A Punnett square has basic genetic information in it. And from that information, you can understand and know what kind of offspring will be created from two parents. Okay? Something here that you probably are not familiar with, <coughs> excuse me, is called a genotype. Say that with me, genotype. A genotype is the genetic makeup of an organism. And when scientists do this, they represent these by letters, okay? When you're watching, you're gonna give an example of a genotype here. The next thing that we, can, we use for a Punnett square is called a phenotype. Say it with me, phenotype. Phenotype starts with P, and this is the physical result of a gene combination. So you put 
you know, a tall jean and a short jean together, what do you get? Hmm. Well, physically, you have a phenotype, whether it's tall or short. If you put a physical result, a phenotype of someone is like their eye color. A phenotype might be that someone is tall. A phenotype might be that someone has long fingernails. A phenotype is a physical result. A genotype is the letters, right? The letters that re are representing a genotype, okay? You're going to see that happen. This next ginormous word is homozygous. Say it with me. Homozygous. Yeah. It sounds pretty scientific. Homozygous means that the paired alleles for a trait that are identical are identical. So like if it's a trait that's capital T, capital T, like tall, or lowercase r, lowercase r, I don't know, for red, um, these are the T and the T are identical, and the R and the R are identical. Those are two examples. These are examples of what? A genotype or a phenotype? If you guessed that it is a genotype, you are correct. Heterozygous is our next word. Say it with me. Heterozygous. Heterozygous is the paired alleles for a trait that are different. So if you have a capital T and a lowercase t, or a capital R and a lowercase r, you see how these letters are different, right? These are identical, these are different. These are identical, these are different. All right, so Mendel was a super famous scientist who studied genetics, and what he figured out, and you already, well, you'll see this in the video today, what he figured out is that when you put two organisms together, you don't get a blend. Hmm, but you know, that's what he thought. So let's take a peek at that theory for a second together. So let's say we have a male and a female. And when we have a male and a female, what, what color do you think their offspring would be? If we put these two together, what do you think their color, their offspring will be? Will their offspring be yellow? Or red and by the way when you mix yellow and red together it's orange so let's see what happens do you think they will be yellow or red or orange here we go let's put them together here's some red here's some yellow let's mix them all up now of course when you have cells they really really mix themselves up and you end up with an offspring that is some form of bright orange. I'm not doing a very good job mixing here, but it's orange, right? You put red and yellow together, you get orange. That's some serious bright orange. Get some of that yellow in there, right? Half male, half female, and you end up with an orange colored offspring, right? Well, Maybe, but that's not what we figured out. We figured out something different. Have you ever played war, like with cards? Here's the rules to war. So one player, like let's say it's Mrs. Tomlinson, puts down a six. And the other player puts down their card, and it's a two. Which army is going to win, the army with six soldiers or the army with two soldiers? Well, the army with six soldiers is definitely going to win. Okay? Bigger number wins. It's more dominant. So if we have an army with seven soldiers and the other team has nine soldiers, which one is going to dominate the other? Well, the nine, right? So let's talk about that word dominate, right? So if there's this and there's... A king and you guys all know about nobility right very very powerful they dominate okay over everyone else so in genetics there are such things called as dominant genes and recessive genes and our next learning target is 
and this is our last notebook page today, notebook page 88, is I can use a Punnett square to determine the possible genotype and phenotypes for offspring. So our first term is dominant. Say it with me, dominant. When one allele can mask the presence of another, and it's represented by a capital letter. So if you have a dominant allele, it's represented by a capital letter. And you'll see in the videos, there are some capital letters and lowercase letters. The capital letters are the strongest. They're from the capital, right? <laughs> the next one is called recessive. Say it with me, recessive. So a recessive characteristic is one that is masked by a dominant allele. It's there, but it doesn't have any power. And its genotype is represented by a lowercase letter, okay? So the, here are the rules for when you combine two organisms. The dominant gene is always listed first, so that would be the capital letter. And the only way to have a recessive trait expressed is to have both alleles be recessive. So remember, a recessive trait is the genotype is with lower letters, so lower B, B, lower R, R. Right? These are lowercase letters. You have to have two of them in order to have any kind of trait show up. When you're done today, you will understand that this is a Punnett square, and you will understand how to look at it. You're going to answer questions about the seed shape, where the male is RR. Remember, capital letters are dominant. And the female is recessive. R, R. The round shape is capital R. So if there are capital R's present, it's round. If the wrinkled is recessive and it's a lowercase r, if you get two R's in your Punnett square, then you have a wrinkled seed shape. So it's either going to be round or it's going to be wrinkled. And there's actually a mathematic way to look at those and determine the probability of when this particular male and this particular female get together, you can determine what types of offspring they can have, whether they have round seeds or wrinkled seeds, okay? So then you're gonna answer this question, what shape is the male? What shape is the female? What shape or shapes are the offspring? What phenotype are the offspring? Remember, phenotype is physical. What genotype are the offspring? And remember, those are represented by letters. All right, today could be really tricky if you zone out. Don't do it. Watch all the videos. Take your time. Watch the practices. And then later, you will have me practice with you for the Punnett squares. So you're going to watch a, a video. You're going to complete, oh, one, two, three notebook pages today. And then you're going to submit your answers to notebook page 88 on a Google form. So you have three notebook pages, one Google form to submit. All right. You have a lot of work to do, and it's super interesting when you put one and one together to get two, right? No, wait a minute. If you put one parent with one parent, you get one offspring. I don't know. This is so complicated. Science and genetics are so cool.